What have Holy Saturday, a good book, Jewism, good coffee, music, the Israelites in the time of slavery, Jesus, the disciples, and actually all of us, but first and, first and foremost, uh, Deutsche Bahn, our train service. So it's not the retard, as many of you might guess, but it's the waiting. So the topic of my talk on Holy Saturday is wait. Waiting, inner emptiness and endurance, stamina. I personally, I need a good book, coffee and music to make the best of a time of waiting. For example, when I'm waiting for Deutsche Bahn, for a train service, as all of you know, they are often in retard, so we often have to wait for it. And the other persons, the other groups I just mentioned, these are situations where we experience waiting in the Bible. For example, there are the Israelites who are in slavery, who are kept in slavery in Egypt. They have to work really hard and they, they are suffering and they are waiting to be freed. They are waiting for Moses to lead them out of slavery. They are waiting for the Pharaoh to let them go. And finally, it happens. After the 10 days, Moses leads the Israelites through the through the sea into the freedom. And also the Jews, they are waiting. In the times of Jesus, they've been, they had been waiting for the Messiah and even today they are still waiting for the Messiah to come. And also Jesus, he experienced a time of waiting. He waited for his crucifixion. He knew during all his, his active time in Israel that this was going to happen. So during this, this active time, he waited, he yearned for this crucifixion and that God would accomplish his work through the crucifixion. Every one of us knows a time of waiting in his own life. For example, we're waiting for holidays, for events, to meet up with friends, maybe for a new job, <coughs> for a time, a time of change. But usually we know when this time of waiting will end, so when the event is going to take place. So we have, an, we're expecting something from this event, for example, f uh, for the Easter Tridium. And so this time of waiting <coughs> is, is a time of waiting in expectation. What has this to do with Holy Saturday? Before we going to have a look on this, I'd like to tell you what happened on Holy Saturday. Yesterday, on Good Friday, Jesus was crucified. He died on the cross and he was buried. Today, on Holy Saturday, Jesus is in the tomb. He is dead. So today, on Holy Saturday, he is in the underworld, in hell. So every time when we say the creed, we say this. He went into hell. And this means for us that Jesus' resurrection actually had already started in the hell, in hell, when he was surrounded from dead people. 
And the underworld had been opened through his resurrection. But Eva is going to tell you more about this this afternoon. But what actually did the disciples do on Holy Saturday? And I like to spot this in two steps. First of all, I want to mention the inner emptiness. Jesus is dead. He is buried. For the Jews, the Saturday is really a time of pause, of silence. The Jews, they don't work. And my own experience, I can tell you, so last year I, I was in Israel and the, Israel, the, the Jews, they really don't do anything on Saturday. So they spend time with their families, but there are no buses, then there's no work, nothing. And also the Jews, the disciples of Jesus, they, they didn't do any work on this Holy Saturday. And I suppose that they needed this day to get strong again because they experienced that Jesus, their best friend, on which they had oriented all their lives, that he was crucified, he was tortured, and how helpless they must have felt. They weren't able to do anything against it. It's not only this helplessness that they felt, but also the inner emptiness. They had oriented all their life towards the fellowship of Jesus, to go with him through all the villages. They, they witnessed great wonders, great miracles. They left their families behind. They quit their jobs to follow Jesus. How empty they must have felt when Jesus was dead. He's buried. He's not among them anymore. And we, we already know that he was going to, to raise from the dead. But the disciples, they don't know that. Because Jesus had already told them, but they didn't understand. They hadn't understood. We can see this because when the tomb was actually empty, that um, the disciples, they don't believe the women who come to witness the the empty tomb. So Peter himself, he had to go there to really see the empty tomb. And when the disciples went to Emmaus, they said to Jesus when they didn't realize that he was Jesus, that's in Luke 24, verse 21, we had hoped that he would be the one who would redeem Israel. How disappointed they must have been about Jesus, from Jesus. The second point I, I'd like to stress is the waiting. Jesus is dead, he is buried. The disciples experience this inner emptiness. And the question is, what happened now? The disciples came on Holy Saturday, even if it's only a short time, but they experienced this time of waiting, of waiting for a change. And what, what's the difference between the waiting of the disciples and the waiting for, a, for an event, for a, the waiting for an event, it's a waiting with a concrete expectation. So we expect um, the event to be like this or that. We, we expect our friends to be like that. But the waiting of the disciples, there is no expectation. Because what do they expect? What should they expect? 
They didn't understand that Jesus was going to raise from the dead, so they didn't expect it. And this is why they had a total inner emptiness and they were just waiting for a change. And that's the actual mystery of Holy Saturday. The disciples experienced this inner emptiness. And they're waiting for a change for the better. And this they have to endure. I've also experienced these moments of inner emptiness, of loneliness. And, <coughs> and I've experienced times when I had to just endure this waiting. And maybe some of you just are experiencing this in this time of quarantine. I'd like to share with you two concrete examples from my own life. The first situation was the moment when my grandfather died. He died quite suddenly. Within one week, we didn't expect that at all. Um, he had uh, an inflammated lung and so he died within a week. And that was a moment when I was experiencing such an inner emptiness because the place that my grandfather had taken in my life was empty. He was not there anymore. He couldn't give me any advice anymore. And especially I got aware about this when I visited my grandmother some days later. I went into the kitchen and I expected, as usual, that my grandmother would be um, <laughs> would just prepare the, the dinner for my grandfather and my grandfather would sit there and prepare the potatoes or whatever. And I went into the kitchen, I stepped into the kitchen and this place was empty. My grandfather wasn't there anymore. And the second situation when I experienced this inner emptiness was in my fifth semester. So as Christiane told you already, I'm studying medicine. So at now, nowadays I'm, I'm in my eighth um, term. So it's um, one and a half years ago. It's it started with the physicum, that's a big test big where you have to prepare a lot and you have to study well. So, as the others of my friends, I, I was focused on myself because this exam was so important and when this exam was was written then there was such a big emptiness in my life because um, the, the the rhythm of studying every day it was not there anymore so two weeks after the exam the next term started so i went back into to greifswald where i'm studying and universities had started we, we met up with our friends and I, I experienced a moment where I felt absolutely lonely and I, had, I felt that um, we were not really good friends anymore and that I didn't have anyone to talk to really. And furthermore, before this big exam, I had moved house. So also all my, um, all my friends I lived with had changed. So everything had changed. And because I didn't have anyone with whom I could talk, I really felt lonely and empty. 
I was a bit despaired. And I even had quite a lot of fights with God. And I asked him, God, why does this happen to me? And just do something that it's going to improve. One improvement or just a few things that had helped me at this time was the time of prayer and first and foremost the time of adoration but also the household where we had praise together where we talked together and another important point at this time where, where the Skype conferences with my old flatmates before that I was in a Christian household and so we met up by via Skype and we prayed for each other and we encouraged one another but the, the real improvement came last year on Easter last year this time uh, our term at university was until the end of March then I went quickly to my parents and then I went to the Easter Tridium and I met so many really good friends I had so many really good talks with these old friends but I also got to know new friends and I really experienced God is present and one moment which was particularly precious, important, was Good Friday. And it was the moment when Jesus says, when he's on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because I could really feel with him how he was feeling. And then I understood Jesus can also understand me and my situation because I myself I also asked my God my God why have you forsaken me why, why did you get me and all of this all of this inner emptiness and inner um, I, I gave to God and Jesus came really into this inner emptiness and he took this inner emptiness with him onto the cross and with my inner emptiness he Jesus went on Holy Saturday into the underworld into this emptiness and with the resurrection he really renewed me so this was a sort of process during Easter but afterwards, I experienced such a graceful time. I could, could spend a lot of time with the community. I was in Israel. I could visit all these important places where Jesus had spent time of his life. And where Jesus could tell me, yes, he, he loves me and he can renew me and wants to give me joy. And in the meantime, it's I'm, I'm feeling quite quite well again in Greifswald where I'm studying. Um, I also have some friends now with whom I can talk about Jesus, about my faith. So looking back, I can really I can really say that I I profited from this time because my relationship to God was strengthened through this time of emptiness so Jesus he really comes into this emptiness into this loneliness of each one of, of us and in the resurrection he takes all of that and he frees us from all of that and he fills us up with new life and with joy so how can we fill this time of waiting? I think the most important is that we don't run away. 
from the situation. That we don't want to escape the situation, but that we learn to endure the situation and to be patient. Three little points I'd like to stress very concretely, which could help us. So I get back to the question, what have Holy today? a good book, the Israelites, good coffee, music, Jewism, Jesus, the disciples, all of us, and the Deutsche Bahn in common. It is waiting. But three things we can use to fill this waiting. It's the book. We can take the Bible. We can study the Bible. We can read the Bible. To, to strengthen our relationship to God and to Jesus. We can get to know God and Jesus better through the study of the Bible. So David is singing a praise to God. And the second point is music. I'm not talking about any any type of concerts, but I'm talking about um, praise and worship. Praise is a form of giving thanks that we can um, pray in community, but also on our own. During this time when I felt this inner emptiness, I experienced how important it is for me to be grateful and how this could change my perspective on things. I'd like to invite you just every evening to note three things that you want to thank God for. Uh, to be honest, I don't make it every day, but the most important things I really noted. So the most important things that I'm thankful for. And when I'm not in a good mood, when I'm really on a point of loneliness, I'm really looking at these things that I've noted and I can see that God loves me, that he's looking after me and that he has already given me so many big things. And the third point is good coffee. I love to drink coffee with friends and uh, talk with friends, to meet up with friends. That can be friends from university. That can be Christian friends that we can open up ourselves. This can be households. This so this can be also when you um, when you meet up with two that you that you ask people to pray for you. We can use also this time of coffee um, to meet up with other people. But if you're drinking coffee on your own, you can also use this time to invite Jesus to. Um, have a coffee with you. So, the Bible, praise and worship, and community, community of prayer. So, so all of these three points, the, po the point in common is prayer. And in this time of waiting for for a change, um, to endure this, the basic is prayer. A good form of prayer is adoration. In adoration, we can step towards Jesus. We can 
lay down everything that that we br are carrying in our hearts and he can renew us he can give us joy and strength and we can put everything down uh, today <laughs> we've got some time until this afternoon and i'd like to invite you to use this time to think about where do i feel empty where do i feel lonely where am i am i waiting for a change for a change for the better for an improvement and to take all these things into the liturgy of um, of easter and to give it to jesus and by his resurre resurrection to um, let ourselves be freed of these points of emptiness okay to come to an end i'd like to pray for this day and for all people experiencing a time of loneliness god i really thank you that you are you have called us as a community in front of you that despite this time of quarantine we can be here together in front of you your that we can celebrate your great deeds i thank you that you sent jesus your beloved son into our world and jesus i thank you that you went onto the cross for our sins all of that you took upon you to accomplish the work of your father and especially i'd like to thank you for this holy saturday when you went into hell into the underworld that you come into our underworld into our loneliness and that you really want to renew us through your resurrection that we could be free that again and again you free us and so i ask you to bless every one of us that you enter this emptiness of each one of us Amen. and that you bless each one of us and give him a life in fullness. Amen.